Hi and welcome to this course, Night Sky Photography, a hands-on tutorial for shooting the Milky Way, star trails and time-lapse. I'm going to take you through the steps to creating stunning images of the stars, and later Sandy will cover all the editing optimizations to bring out the best in your photos. So first, what is the Milky Way? As explained by a fidget spinner. It's our galaxy in a spiral, billions of stars, planets and nebulae that is our home in space, and Earth is just a little dot on the outer spiral. Well, we view the Milky Way from the side, so the long bright strip that you see in the famous images is the core of the galaxy is viewed from the edge. The galaxy is so huge that the light we see as it hits our eyes has traveled for millions of miles at the speed of light, meaning what you see is actually looking back into time, hundreds, thousands, millions of years. And this galaxy is just one of billions in the known universe. Feel insignificant yet? Anyway, back to practicalities. The core of the Milky Way is visible in the northern hemisphere between late spring and late summer. It hovers along the horizon earlier in the year, May and June, early mornings, 3 to 4 a.m. You gotta be pretty motivated to get those shots. At that time of year, it's possible to get a panorama which will show the entire length in an amazing curve along the horizon. If you choose your location correctly, you can include foregrounds that really enhance the image, such as a road or sculptures, and we're gonna cover all of that. Then, as the summer progresses, the core is more visible earlier in the evening, and you can get the core slanted or vertical as it resolves, revolves, which again provides great possibilities of combining with foreground elements. Now, for the rest of the year, the core is actually below the horizon, but don't let that stop you from taking night sky pictures. Even the remaining field of stars will look amazing with a great foreground. Star trails can be captured at any time of year, and meteor showers turn up regularly. All the techniques that I'll show you in this course will work for any time of year. So to help you get outstanding images, one thing I want you to remember is to always be thinking of foreground elements. I'm going to repeat this a lot. The sky alone is a fantastic thing, but in a photograph, the eye needs a reference and an object in the foreground that can help bring emotion and wonder to the photograph. It can be a street sign, a car, a road, a rock formation. You get the idea. So when you start to scout areas for your shoots, always keep that in the back of your mind. Now, with advanced equipment, motorized tripods, telescopes, and adapters, you can shoot deep sky objects and planets, but that's beyond the scope of this course. And apologies in advance to my Southern Hemisphere friends. I'll be talking from a Northern Hemisphere perspective, but the general concepts will still be useful to you. So a final note before we get cracking, the theory of astrophotography can get very in-depth, and we'll touch on a few points, but the focus on this course is the practical aspects of getting results. So when you want to dive deeper and learn more, there are a few books that I can recommend uh, later on. So let's get started. 